I'm Brian. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about fast tech and suck, squeeze, bang, blow. It's going to be good. So a lot of you have had high school auto class or whatever. You probably heard of fast tech. It's been around for a little bit. And it sounds like something that's high technology and really fast and innovative. You know, it's like the, the next big thing. But it's an acronym. And what it stands for is the basic things you have to have in order to have something run. You have to have an air fuel mixture, spark. You have to have an ignition timing and mechanical timing. And you have to have an exhaust or a path for the gases to escape. And you have to have compression. If you're missing any of these, it won't run. Now, how does a four-stroke engine run? It works on the suck, squeeze, bang, blow principle. And that's basically the way that a lot of everything runs. You know, whether it's a rotary engine or a diesel engine or whatever, but diesels are a little bit different. We'll talk about that in the video. Uh, so the way that it works, here's your cylinder, your piston and everything. Like say your cylinder head's here. Cylinder head right at the top where heads ought to be. Your spark plug is here. So anyway, here's our spark. Bam! So the way that this works is when the piston goes down, this exhaust valve closes and then your air fuel mixture goes in, whether it's a carbureted or a fuel injector or something out here squirting fuel into the air and it's getting sucked in. Just like a syringe, just sucks it in. So that's the suck and then both the valves close, piston comes up and it squeezes that air fuel mixture. When you squeeze something, all of the molecules get real excited, they love that. So when they're getting all excited, freak, yeah, they get hot. And then if it's a diesel, you squirt with the injector and it'll bam. Now let's just, what my four stroke and two stroke, what's the difference? Well, here's your strokes. There's four of them. So stroke number one, suck. Stroke number two, squeeze. Stroke number three, bang. Stroke number four, blow. So basically, air gets sucked in, this side's open, that side's closed on your valves, and then both of them close, it squeezes it, and then bang, it goes down, they're both still closed, and then the exhaust valve opens, and it goes out. So there's a timing to it. Now if you had your valves open or closed at the wrong time, then you're not going to have good compression, and that's one of the key things to the fast tech. Without compression, you can't compress the air fuel mixture, and it won't ignite properly, it won't run good. Um, Without compression, if you don't have a good seal on your piston rings, when it goes like this, the piston will just go down, but it won't have that suction, you know, like a, a syringe with a bad uh, rubber on the plunger. So, it, let's talk about this. So what happens if you don't have fuel? If you don't have fuel, then you just have air. Does air explode? Well, hopefully not. So you have to have fuel. What if there's no air? If you have it inject, but say you're not getting air in there because of blocked air filter, or you know, like you got a big plastic bag or something, suck in and block the air filter. Can't breathe, it's just like anything else that has to aspirate. You know, it just won't go. So you have to have fuel in air, that's obvious. Now what about spark? On a gasoline engine, without that spark, you're not gonna do anything. Uh, you have to have spark. Now what about time? And we talked about intake valve has to open to let that in and the exhaust valve has to let it open to let it out. So if you don't have timing, if these aren't going at the right time, then it won't run. It'll lose compression, it won't be tight. And there's also ignition timing. This has to fire, you know, before it gets to the top, you know, so many degrees before top dead center. Because this mixture takes a little time for the flame to spread. You know, when you run at thousands of RPM, You've seen explosions on TV. It's not like, you know, not like a nuclear explosion. It's like, it grows. It takes some time. So this has to fire a little bit, you know, like 10 degrees before top dead center. Top dead center is just when the piston gets right at the very top. There's ignition timing and mechanical timing exhaust. Now what if you were to close this, and so we, we suck it in, we squeeze the air, air fuel mixture, it goes bang, and then the exhaust valve doesn't open, or there's blockage in the exhaust and the piston doesn't want to go back in. That drag's going to cause a engine to stall. It's like too much load. Compression, we talked about compression in order for the squeeze thing to work. Um, you can see how all of these relate. The air fuel mixture has to be sucked in and it's got to be there, it won't bang. Blow, that's the exhaust one. We talked about that and then compression. So you have to have all of these things in order to have a vehicle run properly. And so I've got a special treat for you today. We have a 2014 Polaris 
uh, with a crank, no start. It's the fuel injected 800 cc high output with electric power steering. There's all your information in one fender. That's pretty good. So, so like I say, they're out riding this, and the only real symptoms they got, they didn't get any warnings or indicators or anything on the information center. But basically, it started running poorly, and then they thought, well, this is no good. We better turn around and head back down. So heading back down the mountain, and it just got worse and worse, and then it just went clack, you know, or whack, or thump, 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 whack, or something like that and it died and it hasn't run since. Um, as for right now, so it sounds like it has compression. Here's the first thing I do with something with a crank no start issue. It's so easy. Is I sprayed starting fluid in there and what that did is it bypassed the entire fuel system, injector pulse and everything. So we pull out the air filter so I've got a fire extinguisher handy. I've just sprayed in some starting fluid. Let's see what happens. So there's a whole lot of nothing. Now normally, when you have something that cranks but won't start, you're missing one of these things in the fast tech. That's what that applies to. If your car won't even crank, then you probably have another problem. But crank no start, um, you'll hear that a lot in mechanic speak. This is where you want to go to. And it is a fast way to do it. Normally you're missing fuel, like your fuel pump's not working, or your fuel injectors aren't going, something to that effect, or you're missing spark. It's usually one of these things. I've got spark testers, so it's a two cylinder, you got a spark plug here and a spark plug here. So it's like you got a couple of 400cc jugs married to each other. So we're going to look at it and we're going to check it for a few things, the first of which is spark. I don't know if you can see that, but we have spark. So there is spark, and in process of getting into this thing, I noticed that there's stuff melted all over. This is the water outlet. I believe that's the thermostat housing. And when you look closely, you're like, what is that, pancake syrup? Well, it's not pancake syrup, it's this hose. There's a vent hose either to the axle or the transmission, and it's melted and even closed off. But this one just terminates in the frame but it's basically the vent for the axle. So I don't know if the axle is what went clunk and something else failed, um, but not only did the hose melt, but we also have melting on the temperature sensor. I'll zoom you in there and you can see it's not filling the hole very well. It's just totally melted and goobered over to the side and it should be, yeah, it's making contact on that hose or else it would have been flopped down completely. It's even on the back of the motor, the engine labels all melted away. And when you look up under here, you see that hose is melted onto the little thing there. We got melted plastic. We got all kinds of junk running all over this engine. Either that hose is, melts way too easy. I mean, look at that all over the side of this thing. It's just a huge mess. Just annihilated. If you change your oil regularly, if you don't overheat, most of the timing's not going to, your timing's not going to go off and compression's not going to go off. And if you don't hit a rock and smash your exhaust flat, or if it's not rusted out, or something to that effect, you usually find that with modern diesels, with all those, uh, with all those cans they have in the exhaust going back, you know, whether it's your uh, particulate filter, uh, catalyst, or whatever, exhaust is becoming a bigger thing with diesels, and with catalytic converters and gasoline vehicles, you know, you can have an issue with that, or a muffler failure, or whatever. Uh, but for the most part, it's fuel and spark. So normally this test, you know, you just put a Kleenex or something over the muffler. Normally this test is for something to see if there's a blockage. It's blocked the exhaust passage so bad or the muffler so bad, usually rust, which doesn't apply to this, but we're just going to do the fast tech thing anyway and see if it fluffs up. So we can see it's fluffing it. We don't have an exhaust blockage. Okay, so we know that we have fuel because the fuel pump's coming on and we bypassed it with the starting fluid and it's still not starting, so that's not our primary concern. There's something else out there, might, can it not run? So fuel, air, spark, T is timing, and it sounds like we have timing, uh, but we're not sure, we'll have to inspect that mechanically here in a minute. But we know that the exhaust is good, 
and compression it sounds like there's compression so I'm saying that either the timing's gone or the compression's gone uh, but we'll have to get in there and verify that so the first thing you do is just get it to crack and then we'll spin it out the rest The first thing I'm going to do is look for mechanical damage, see if something hit, because he said he heard something go whack. So looking at this, it looks like it was burning pretty clean, and it wasn't hit, so I guess that's a good sign. We'll check out the other one, see what it looks like. Okay, so here we have the spark plug. We've pulled it out, we're looking at it, and no mechanical damage on this either. So let's get our compression tester in there, and we'll see what our compression's like, shall we? Let's. We've got this in there. So this is the cylinder on the back side. It's going to throw all kinds of crap in my face. Got no compression. Zero on this front one. It's just dead. Alright, how about this one? This one I bet is going to have some because it was throwing crap in my face. So we have no mechanical damage on the spark plugs. We've got 60 weak PSI. It should be like 120, 150. So we're going to have to pull the cylinder head on this thing. It's got some damage. Let's get a bore scope and see what's inside. I'm curious to see what's behind door number one and door number two. So I got out of the bore scope. I had a little bit of trouble with it. So this is going into the back cylinder. I went into both of them, but I couldn't get the footage for the second cylinder. But what I want you to see is that it's very rough. I mean, this looks like it was cast, not milled. And it's just full of gouges, full of problems. You can see where it's got little holes along the side of the piston. There's actually a little piece of piston ring floating around in there. You'll see there at the end of the clip. The other piston looked meticulous. It looked great, but there's a little bit of coolant in it, a little bit of droplets, and, you know, a little bit of... Uh, it, it looked like black antifreeze in there striping down the side. So looking along the side, you can see the cross hatching. There's a little stripe in it, not bad. There's a little piece of piston ring right there. Ha ha, jackpot. Okay, so how fast was this diagnosis? Not very fast. It was the very last thing on the list, compression. However, if you just go down and you do my quick method, it's like the quick fast tech, uh, check your air fuel mixture with your starting fluid and then check for spark. When you pull out the spark plug and you're checking for spark, do a compression test. You know, timing's typically okay, exhaust is okay, air, you know, generally you're not going to have a problem unless there's a plastic bag sucked into the mix. So, you know, pull a spark plug, check for your spark, do your starting fluid, and usually that's going to get it pretty quick. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to click thumbs up and subscribe. I'm going to have all kinds of videos like this coming out in the future. We'll probably do a video on this. Uh, pull the cylinder head and see which of the valves is burned up or if the piston rings got smeared. Stay tuned, it should be fun.